Studio. Check. Frequencies check. We are live on air. You are listening to the impact blessing the airway. Take the journey into the world of sports, news, entertainment, while embracing the hottest beats on the planet. Come on, Rocking the mind, body, and with energy, electricity, and a splash of controversy. Now, without further ado, it's our pleasure to bring to you the biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The SBTV Nation. Oh, feeling good, Dream. You sound like you didn't go out last night. I did not, because no. I was busy just counting dollars, baby, stacking <laughs> as the Nashville Predators beat Anaheim like your boy Carl. And, and Kat, you still think the Spurs going to win? Oh, my God. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Talk to me, player. Damn, man. You know what? I, they, they, they just can't catch up. That's the problem. Mm. And, and defensively, they've got no answers. The, the the transition game for Golden State is insane. It, it just oh, the transition defense just doesn't work. I I don't know. I I, I Guys, thought the Spurs listen, can the catch a game. The only thing I am going to say though about this, the NBA has the perfect storm coming because the NBA Finals with LeBron and Golden State is the ratings are going to be so through the roof for everybody watching this final series and NBA they got to be foaming at the mouth right now with, with anticipation of this series coming they better they better hope so because it's been two and a half months of garbage <laughs> I mean even even like the competitive series you're sitting there and you're like all right it's a game seven for who's gonna lose to LeBron yeah. Like it's a game seven for who's gonna lose to Golden State. So the NBA, I, I agree with you. I, I can't wait for this finals. But again, they're gonna keep us waiting until June first. Yeah. And you know, it's gonna be crazy, but I don't know. I mean, do, do you guys see what the uh what the percentage that Golden State's at? They already have it out. What Golden State's at to beat Cleve? Um, I saw like minus three thirty three for Golden State and plus two fifty for Cleve if they play each other so what's crazy there is if you look at like they, there was some like mathematical now you know espn does like the win percentage of series so right sure. now where they each are in each other's series looking to both sweep they still have golden state as a 93 percent likely favorite to win that series 93 mm. percent. and i'm sure you guys agree with that ah <sighs> I, I don't can, I don't I don't agree with it. No, ninety three percent's a lot. Yeah, ninety three percent is a lot. I I do give. You know I don't I don't know. You know when at first thought and watching these two teams throughout the the, the, the season. You know I was leaning a, a lot towards Golden State, but now after watching Cleveland in the playoffs right now and just remembering what Cleveland did last year. And just remembering Golden State's inability to be effective, you know, rebounding defensively and finding answers for LeBron James as well was problematic for them. You know, I I honestly I'm on the fence right now with this. I gotta say I'm about 60% leaning towards Golden State, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, you, you know, Cleveland's been very impressive. A lot of momentum right now, winning in a lot of different ways, a lot of aspects this season. They've played a lot of different type of basketball in this postseason where other players emerging and looking like the most selves, especially Kevin Love looking like Kevin Love from back in the day. I don't know if you can really count the Cavs out. Yeah, I mean, I heard something that I completely agree with today. I mean, you don't count them out. I still would give Golden State probably 75%. And mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the thing that I heard is, like, what Jordan used to do, obviously, used to score, assist, like, all facets of the game. But one of the biggest things was controlling the pace of play. So if LeBron can really, I mean, be Jordan-esque, control the pace of play, keep scoring like he's scoring, that's how, that's how they win. But 
I just hope we see a good series, guys, because I don't know. There's something telling me, though, if Golden State starts running on them, and I also think, I mean, the Celtics are, you know, you said it yesterday, Dream. It's like the worst possible matchup, you know, I mean, for, for the Celtics is Cleve. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. We kind of all said before the playoffs, right, no one was going to hang with either of these teams until they played each other. Uh, and I still got to believe what I see. I still think Golden State gets the win in the series. Well, I think the Spurs, the, the Spurs, I felt would have been formidable. You know, the, the injuries, obviously, to Parker and Kawhi. I mean, those are hard. That, that's like, you know, oh, those that's are huge. two best players. Yeah, you know, that's no. like if you were playing the Patriots minus Brady and, I don't know, uh, uh, Amadola, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's 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 your two best players, so we can't take anything away from that. Still, you know, the, the, the Spurs have been somewhat competitive in their series. I just think that Golden State's transition game, I don't think they're going to have the same type of success against Cleveland, moving that ball back and forth in transitions. One of the things you got to look at with the Cavaliers too as well, the Cavaliers do know, it seems like I, I always have a problem with teams that are missing threes and just keep hoisting them, i.e. the Houston Rockets, sometimes Oklahoma City Thunder. The Cleveland Cavaliers are one of those teams that it seems to me when the threes aren't dropping in, they figure out a way to do something different. They don't just keep hoisting them, which means that it's going to shut down on your long rebounds and, and kind of shut down your transition as well if the threes aren't dropping. So I think that... I think that Cleveland's mentality and the way they approach the series is going to be that of which they're not going to allow Golden State opportunities to get the ball in transition. And that's that's going to be a problem. I'm I'm with you there. I think the other thing that Cleve, I, they're the better defensive team. Now, whether they can be as good defensively against Golden State, right? But I think what they need to bring into the foray is some serious contact. Like, I'm talking like 1990s Knicks Heat type contact where <laughs> where guys are going to the rim and, you know, you got guys going, going to the ground. You got guys hitting that pavement or, or whatever, hitting the hardwood. Um, because I think if you start doing that and you start making these guys on the perimeter game worry like, hey, is that closeout going to be in my grill? You know, and that's something that you don't really see a lot of teams doing anymore. But I think that's that's got to be part of the formula to beat Golden State is make them think about every shot they're taking. Yeah, You know, I also think I think that the issue with Golden State to me is if Golden State's not shooting at a high percentage level when they're playing Cleveland and not sinking their shots, Golden State can be their own worst enemy as well. Oh. Whereas Houston, whereas Cleveland, you know, they can make some adjustments and go in some different places and find some. For some reason, it seems like w when you see Golden State cold, like everybody's cold. Like, like none of the guys can hit their shots. Uh, so it doesn't give them any other options and any other where to go. Whereas Cleveland, if the outside shot's not working, let's get the ball down low. Let's get it into Tristan. Let's get it out to LeBron. Let's see if he can work it in the you don't really see the, the Golden State War. The Golden State Warriors are transition and three point shot shooting and, and, and deep outside shot shooting. As far as that inside post game when they have to have the basket, that's one element of their game that they don't they don't have, which I think is going to be a big handicap against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And yeah, but the one the one difference that I see is that let, I mean you don't ever especially right now that LeBron's going to have an off game. But let's say he has one off game. You don't got anywhere else to go. If, you know, you got three guys on Golden State that could really handle the load offensively. Oh, I you disagree. Don't you, don't, you don't like Kyrie? Kyrie I is one of the best David, ball handlers I've ever seen. I mean, he can I'm dribble I'm not talking like about ball handling. I'm talking about taking over a game. I'm talking about taking over the game. Mm. I'm saying that Kevin Durant... Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and even Draymond Green at times. I mean, I'm not saying that they're all better than Kyrie. I think eh, I would say except for Draymond, and Draymond's just a different player, but any any one of those guys can completely take over the game. You think Kyrie, if LeBron isn't right, if LeBron isn't completely right, you think Kyrie can take over that game? Well, the issue is LeBron. Le LeBron's game, if it's not right, there's a that's a lot to say. 
Yeah, because right. LeBron's game not being right. It's not just his outside shot. It's not just his post game. It's not just his defense. There's so many elements that LeBron brings to the table, which is why he's the player that he is. So it's hard to it's hard to say if he's not Agreed. right. Because, because there's something else. Now, here's the other issue. I heard you throw Klay Thompson in. I, get Klay Thompson out of there. Because to me, Klay Thompson is the one guy on Golden State that for some reason – you can just – he can just not show up night in and night out. I mean, I, I like his game play, and I've always loved his game. But I think especially with adding Kevin Durant to that offense, the person to me that suffered the most in that offense has been Klay Thompson. I just think he's getting less opportunities. I think that's why you're seeing – I mean, if you look at not, – uh, not the game yesterday, but like the game uh, a few days ago against the Spurs – I mean, he, he's four for 10. I mean, but he only had, I mean, 10 opportunities from, you know, uh, to make a shot. And then, you know, last time he's seven for 15, still saw. I mean, this is a dude that's basically a 42% three point shooter. All I'm saying is when I say take over a game, I'm saying like for a five minute stretch, can Clay Thompson carry your team and put up 10 points, which he can do. Why are you guys, why are you guys counting out the Spurs and the Celtics so far? Oh, it's first of the Celtics to count it out. Because they're, in, I mean, they're injury hobbled. And then, you know, Isaiah Thomas, he said, look, you might as well just, because it's only going to be another two games anyway, and it's in Cleveland, so just just get yourself together. We ain't going to say <laughs> Isaiah Thomas is out. Get ready to get traded. Isaiah Thomas, guys, in case you haven't heard, is done for the year. So their best player is out, and now they're a 17-point underdog going into Cleveland this evening. Makes for a and you know what? Watch watch Cleveland screw around tonight. Just kind of keep it close, you know. Just because you know you know how they dream. You know that they have another level, which yes. is not so good. Yes. Which they may you know. I, I don't know though. I think they they want to look. That's equal, not happening. I think they want to look equally as impressive to Golden State. It's almost like you know, it's almost like a pissing contest at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that oh as much as like we've talked about. It's just a bad, I mean, it's just, just a bad, bad matchup. And they're oh, able I to hear. capitalize off of it at every point and every turn. And, you know, Boston really has no answer. Yeah, defensively, they can slow them down or put a little body on them or get physical. But offensively, they just don't have any answers and they don't have any that many options. And now their their biggest option offensively is out. I mean, I, I don't know how Cleveland doesn't win by double digits tonight. Olytic, baby. Yeah, Matt, I, I actually I agree with exactly what you're saying though. You know that LeBron believes in the psychological aspect of the game as much as anybody, and all these guys are really prideful guys. And I and you know that Golden State is looking at these games like, oh my god, 41 point lead in the first half, just absolute annihilation. I, I think I think there's something to that. Right I, and see, I I don't because you're not telling. Are you telling me that Golden State is looking at the Cavs Celtics series, saying that they're scared? I, to me, no, this, no, no, to, no, no, no. To scared. me, they're looking at this Cavs Celtics series, saying, "Look at dusty ass Boston ain't even helping us out at all." They just <laughs> no, made. I think I think I think where is making a difference is like, look, you got forty one point lead. Did, did, LeBron still played all his regular minutes in that game, and there was no need for it. I think what they're trying to do is they're just saying, like, you know, no no rest. Like, they, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's like they're they're at a different level, but they don't even need to be. I mean, they could have stepped it back in that game. They never did. Yeah. And I, I got to give a shout-out right now to Rick Lopez sending me some outstanding stuff right now. <laughs> Dream, those are those – are, those are really top numbers. I mean, you got Dolly Castro there that just is is one of my absolute favorites of all time. So, hey, big ups to him. Good morning to you, brother. <laughs> Glad you're out there <laughs> feeling good today. So that's pretty much where it is. And if you look at the Boston Celtics right now, they're plus 7,000 to win the series. 7,000, guys. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has the testicular fortitude to take care of that, but not me. Not me, because I already got Cleve versus Golden State. I'm looking stellar. You and right me now. both. Stellar. So, all right, guys. Well, Dan, how did it end up going in uh, baseball yesterday? So, in baseball, I wound up eleven dollars. Eleven dollars. <laughs> eleven dollars. Better than a loss. Of, you know, it ended up. Um, 
you know, I thought we were going to have a really good day because the Rockies really started putting on the Reds. And then all of a sudden, everything went to hell and the game ended up like 12-8. I think the Rockies were up at 8-2 at one point. Um, the Mets almost blew it. But hey, the Mets and, uh, you know, you're plus money. But this is where your, you know, plus money re- uh, run line or, you know, reverse run line has really worked out. So, you know, we wound up plus $11 in MLB, but then we unloaded on Golden State. So, you know, day worked out. Yeah, day worked out, and the Pittsburgh Pirates got it done and won by three runs. So, right. remember and, we oh, were yeah, talking... I meant to say good call on Yeah, that. remember we were talking about giving the two and a half, but... I know. I, I didn't. I, I didn't do it. And that paid... Uh, I would have... That paid, like... That paid us, like, plus two what? 260 if we put that in? But, si- yeah, somewhere around there. And, and look, again, props to, you, to to this little system you're, you're doing because I ended up two and four, but plus money. Right. That's what I'm saying. Two and four in baseball, but plus money. Um, you know, look, I, a lot of people say, oh, it's $11. You know, look, that that's all fine and good. Um, I didn't lose. So Yeah, because, you know. Dan, Dan <laughs> if you think about it, if you're taking favorites, you know, you're, you're minus, let's say, even like minus 110, minus 113, minus 120. You know, I, I know that you like to sprinkle in dogs here and there, but you're and if you go two and four with favorites, you, you're down almost what three units. But yeah. instead, now oh, you're yeah. plus eleven dollars, so you, you know you're doing pretty good. And yeah. uh, hey, it is what it is. And and I keep preaching everybody, you can't be mad if you win by one run. Don't just put that out of your brain because you're going to have a handful of those. So just no. But any anybody who rode me with with the Mets. <laughs> Yesterday, I don't know if you saw what happened there, but you know, again, up, I think it was seven two, and you know, going into the ninth inning, and you know, the bases loaded, and they end up getting out of there seven five and barely cover. So it's like, it, it does give you a little bit more of a thrill. But again, this is another thing that we've been preaching forever. It allows for the hedge. It allows for the hedge, exactly. So oh, that's where it's at, man. So uh, the rest of it, I'm just looking at what went down in the MLB. The D-backs are just laying the smackdown on people, huh? Nine team, one man. again yesterday, man. So really, really good team. They're going to be a really force to be reckoned with, I think. Uh, come them you know. and the Rock, them the Rockies and the Dodgers. I mean, would anybody be surprised right now if three playoff teams come out of the West? Uh, no, because the rest of the NL is not that good. No, I mean, and that could happen, which would be crazy. Then you'd have a one-game playoff between probably, like, the Dodgers and the Rockies. I'd love to see a Coors Field one-game playoff. Guess what? I'm going to tell you another thing. The Cubs are not making the playoffs. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You can't sit here on May 21st and I was say that. Ready to, I was just getting ready to get right into Anybody, anybody want to wager on that? I, I will wait. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Well, what do you want? Because because Dan, it, last I remember, you still owe me a steak dinner, brother. So. I do. I do. I do owe you a steak dinner, and I'm a man of my word. So you know, I know you're working like crazy. So it might have to be Omaha steaks, but I'll send you that. I'll send you that, <laughs> I'll send you that package I, of Omaha. I won't steak. be able to get it. <laughs> Dude, you know, you know, you know, it cost me like. It, it'll set- sit in one of his cribs with the pipes frozen and water ran yeah, over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. The meat got. <laughs> the you meat know, la- last I mean, there were a whole three games out of first place behind the Brewers. I mean, and you're you're counting them out of the playoffs. They're not going to make the playoffs. So the Red Sox are not going to make the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, well, that- sizzle. The Red Sox are going to make the playoffs, too. Yeah. Red Sox are going to make the playoffs because the Red Sox are going to go on a massive run at some point. And remember, I know we all love to hate on David Price, but from like June to August, he's really good. It's just, you know, before that and after that, he's really bad. So they still got another guy that's coming in for pitching. And I think the Red Sox are going to make a trade sooner or later. Remember, guys, you, you look at these teams that are struggling. The Red Sox, yeah, it's like, oh, they're in fourth place. They're four and a half games back. If they win five in a row and the Orioles or the Yankees lose four in a row, they're in first place. Right and on. if anybody wants to sit here and tell me on May 21st well, that the Red Sox or the Cubs or, you know, the Astro, you know, these teams can't win five, seven, eight games in a row. That sounds Atlanta Falcon-ish, Dan. If the refs had <laughs> called one flag, the Patriots would have lost the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. I mean, it's not even about. I'm just saying. No, I'm, like, no, I'm, I'm messing with you. I, every I, team. I, I mean, look saying. at look at the Yanks, right? Look at the Yanks. The Yanks just dropped out of first place yesterday. Masahiro Tanaka is a mess. Is an absolute disaster right now. Um, you know, everybody was so hot on them. They were like, "Oh, the Yankees are going to win the World Series." Yankees lose a couple more games. They're in third or fourth place. So let, let's be realistic here about what's going on. And I mean, the Cubs, dude, the Cubs are still incredibly talented. They have one of the better managers in the game. Definitely top three uh, in baseball right now. Cubs are making the playoffs. Uh, we'll have to have let's that talk about, I would like them not to. Let's talk about Andre Durrell's uncle last night in the fight. <laughs> Oh, dude. <laughs> dude. Let's talk. That's ultimate. That's ultimate. Got your back. Part of the team type player. Listen, <laughs> Jarrell, Jarrell gets knocked out after the bell. The other fighter gets disqualified. I'm not going to try to butcher his name. Jarrell's uncle comes over and sucker punches. Hey, you seen it? No, no, I'm trying to look oh, it up. Oh, dude, it's, it's all over. It's all over ESPN. So, ha- basically what happened is boxing match HBO last night or whatever. The the bell rings, and like a good three seconds after the bell, this dude jaw. I mean, basically, it's a sucker punch after the bell and knocks the dude out. So the dude who gets knocked out ends up winning the fight due to a disqualification. His corner man is his uncle. Runs across the ring, looks like he's going to shake hands, and then hits the Stuck other fighter right in the jaw. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I'm not seeing the video. I'm seeing the photos. <laughs> Dude, what the hell is that all about? <laughs> he's, uh, he's going to jail. He's going to go to jail for that. Yeah, of that course. And then, what he but not, you know did... what? The other fighter did hit him after the bell. It was dirty as hell. I'm not saying you do that, but, like, I don't know. If I'm, like, sitting there and my brother got hit, like, a good three seconds after the bell, you know, and, like, is knocked out, I might not go hit the other fighter, but, like. Wow. Hey, but you know what, guys? Let's give it to him. That takes a lot of balls. He didn't hit the other <laughs> corner man. He didn't hit, like, the towel boy. He hit the other fighter. Yeah, yeah right. right. Right, right, right. I'm looking at it right now. I mean, it's, it's a that's a great left hand, too. Wow. I mean, he's got spit flying out of his mouth and everything, man. So crazy. Oh, dude. Crazy. All right. So what do you guys want to get? Went on dreaming yesterday, but dreaming did not. Did not show up yesterday for the Preakness for the most part. Um, I don't know if he was, people thought we were going to get another triple crown winning. Crown computing, cloud computing comes in and um, ends up winning the uh, Preakness yesterday. Got it. All right. Who did not participate in the Kentucky Derby. See, to me, I think that that's, I, don't, I got kind of an issue with that. What, do you think it should be all the horses that competed? Why? Then it's I just think, the same I, race. I think, I think, I think every horse should, if you're going to, for the, for the three races, it should be like a three race. I don't know. Cause, cause that's, that's what you, that's what you're looking at in a triple crown for. So it should be a, a, I guess maybe considered a triple crown event. All the horses that enter, you know, stay in it or are eliminated, you know, due to injury or whatever, but you don't get a guy like, like you don't get to not run in the, you don't get to not run in the Derby, but you're going to run in the Preakness and it's you don't get to not run in the dream. No, I don't know. I, no, I, I get that, but I'm just saying it to me. It seems like it's almost not fair. Mm. I, I, I mean, I wish it could be like that, but I think what it is, is like there are different types of tracks. All oh no, three. definitely. Yes. So I guess they run it like that, but no, I, if, it, but it still, is a here's, little... my, here's my thing with the Preakness, though. It's only a week, what, two weeks away from the Kentucky Derby. So it's not like, you know, I might would understand it, okay, and the Belmont's a little different because you've got some time, whatever you have there. But for it to be like this, it's almost like, hey, Liz, you know what? I'm, I'm good. I'm not going to show you guys my horse for the Kentucky Derby. I'm just going to show up with the Preakness and then smoke everybody. I don't know. It's kind of, I'm not kind of feeling it. Any of you guys have any interest to go to Saratoga this summer? It's, How are you going to go to Saratoga, player? It's you dope. Can't, you, you can barely get out on the weekend. Stop. On the weekend, I, I can make it work if I have if I have plenty of notice. If I have plenty of notice, I can make it work. I think that's, what, Saratoga will be two months notice from now? 
What yeah. is when is the Saratoga? It's like uh, September, things? isn't it? Into August, no, September. No, it's 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 earlier than that. It's in is the summertime. It? It's dull. I, I it, 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 it was, August is still summer, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, to a certain extent, I guess. It, it, it already starts getting cold sometimes, man. Just that the cold weather is just dying to come back. It's nuts. So, uh, no, we'll take a look well, at it. It's got to leave. It's got to leave first. It's got to leave first, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point, Dan. Very good point. It's August. Uh, I think it's the. Tw- I think it's August twenty sixth. I think it's that weekend. So Is that, it that's really? a while away. But yeah, I think we're. I think it's that far away. Wow. It's always in August or something. Okay. But, well, yeah. whatever. We can make it work. We'll we'll figure it all out. So, all right, boys. What else you got, Dream? That's it, man. That's it as far as what went on yesterday. Um, we did have. I, I think. Arsenal one. I don't know if you guys are into that. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I, I see that. What, well, what about the? Let's, uh, get, into today, well, let, let's get into the zero-zero tie that, that happened in the Premier League yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> what an exciting game that was in soccer! Everybody it. cheering. Yeah, all right. I got the draw. Perfect. <laughs> and by the way, soccer, man, soccer, those of you who are into soccer, man, those of you who talk about sports, if you want to do a sports being corrupt and, and, and fixed, you could do that with soccer all day. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, 100%. You know, as is, as is a, a lot of ammunition backing that up. You just kick the ball around. So let's get into game. today, gang. We got a full slate of baseball. Everything's about to kick off. You got your one o'clock start. Sunday's a nice day for baseball. Yeah, I actually is. tune into a bit of baseball on Sundays. Usually just leave the TV on, leave it on like, I don't know, one of the games, and then I'm back and forth in and out, and I'll stop for a second and look for uh, a look for a quick three out play and then go back to doing what I was doing. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, right. Live wager, who's gonna score the next run? Yeah. And then kick it off. I got you, Dream. All right. So, Dan, where would you like to start off with the Major League Baseball cards? Oh, man, it's another day where I got a fair amount of stuff going on. Um, and I'm doing it all with the minus one and a halfs again. All right, perfect. So, well, I've got one at 215, but uh, I- I'd like to hear what guys, you guys say. Guys, is it that, that much? Is it, oh. is it that less beneficial to do it at minus one as opposed to the one and a half? Um... The mi- well, let me let me let me, let me give you an example. All right, yeah. so uh, let's just pick the first game off the board, which is the Washington Nationals. So, mm-hmm. minus one seventy five is their money line. Minus one oh five is their run line. So it's basically even money. Then the minus one is minus one forty one. So it's like forty percent difference. Yeah, dude. it's a lot of juice. It's a lot oh, of juice. Okay. It's a All lot right, of juice. So okay. we like the one and a half, especially when All you right. get nine at bats. Being in a being a road team, Dan, where are you starting? Yeah, so let's let's start with a two fifteen er. All right, and I am gonna do the craziness and go with the San Francisco Giants. Oh tonight. wow, I'm 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 the opposite way. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, <laughs> so you got Kane versus Wainwright. Kane three and one with a four oh four. Wainwright three and three with a five three one. Um, coming off a really good start against the Cubs, I'll give him that. Um, Kane has not been horrible. I mean, the Giants have been kind of bad, but I I really think that the Giants are going to get a win here. Um, they're going to win by a couple runs. I think Wainwright gets blown up. That's that's just where I'm going with that. I think it's going to be a fairly high scoring game. I could see the Giants winning this game like seven four eight five something really? like that. Oh yeah. See, I'm the opposite way. I I, I look at the San Francisco Giants team. I got to be honest with you. They, they have no bats, Dan. They they score less than three and a half runs a game. You know, I, I don't know. I just and, and I do understand where you're going with the dog because you know clearly on Sundays you get a lot of dogs that come to form. You know, we talked about that time and time again. I don't know what the exact number is if you go back, you know, a few months, but um, I think St. Lucia gets it done here. I mean, they're superior in like everything I'm looking at: uh, offense, defense, team ERA, hits, walks defensive hits I, I mean I don't know I just think they're clearly the better team San Francisco does nothing for me um I like St. Louis minus the one and a half so I'm the opposite well hey listen one of us is going to cash pretty big on that if it happens as long as it's not a one-run game Dan 
<laughs> exactly. All right. Exactly. Well, I'm the opposite way. I'm going to take Wayne Wright today. I think he gets it done. All right. I mean, look, I'm getting the minus one and a half in the Giants at plus 240. Yeah, right. So you're in great shape if that comes to form. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Sounds good, uh, man. So that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm completely opposite of you today. Gotcha. All right. Well, that's only one. You know what? I missed an earlier one. So we'll, we'll jump back an hour uh, to 110. And I know this didn't work out for us yesterday, but I'm going to ride it again. That's the Colorado Rockies. Okay. Um, you know, we we have Bronson Arroyo starting for the Reds again today. Mm-hmm. Um, against the Rockies, he's absolutely terrible in his whole career. His whole career is like five and four, but a five ERA, 16 homers and 77 innings against them. And uh, if you look at how the Colorado Rockies, their current lineup hits him, it's ridiculous. Even their pitchers hitting like a buck fifty off, nice. off uh, Bronson Arroyo, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, this kid Kyle Freeland comes in. He's a lefty. That works out really well, I think, against the Reds lineup. Um, you know, he's got a 3.13 ERA, 4-2. and two. And look, the, the Rockies got a little bit embarrassed last night. Um, their pitching staff did. You know, they gave up a ton of runs in a game they should have won, but they're a good team, a legit team, and I think they come back and they get a big win today. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, let's just take a look at the rest of it here. Um, it does sound like a pretty good play. I mean, the, the Rockies, you know, they, they definitely have the, what's the word, the offensive prowess to get it done. I mean, they've been putting up a lot of runs this year. So oh, almost yeah. five runs a game. Cincinnati does too, though. Just keep that in the back of your brain. But I'm, I hear you. I if and if you're a hundred dollar better right now with the Colorado Rockies, you're up almost fourteen hundred dollars, Dan. So you're doing pretty well. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a reason why the Rockies have won twelve more games than the Reds have to to this point. You know, they they are a far superior team. Understood. All right, man. So where are we at next? Yeah. So let's. Uh... Let's go. Look, you know what? Let's go to Chicago. Let's go to Chicago. You got let's, the. Let's see here. Hold on, pulling it up. Got the it's Cubs be versus the, same the Brewers. Starters as yesterday. Yes, because we got rained out yesterday. Yes, which you know, I I don't know. I mean, I don't think a lot of people like to look into that and think it means something. I don't think it means anything. I think it just means that I get another shot to uh, take the Brewers. <laughs> I, they're not even offering the reverse run line on the Brewers right now, again. So it looks like I'm stuck with a plus 170 money line, which okay. is fine. I, I just don't, again, I know we talked about this yesterday, so no need to harp on it. But again, you have Anderson who's 2-0 and with a 3-4-3 and has looked really good. And Arietta's looked terrible. I mean, I know he's 4-3, and but a 5-4-4 ERA and the Brewers are in first place right now, and their offense is ridiculous. I I really like this. I mean, I wish I could find it at minus one and a half because it'd be like plus 230 or 240, but I'll take the money line. Well, you got to give it some time. I mean, you know, they, they take their time putting the totals out there first, which we have 10 Everything's and a half. out, though, for everything else from everything I've seen. That, yeah. That's the only one that's not being offered, except yep. for the night game. All right. Sounds good, Dan. Well, so. CC Sabathia is pitching versus Chris Archer today in the American <laughs> League East. I don't know if you have any opinion on that one. Uh, no, I mean, the Yanks are scuffling. This is like, I kind of think this is like a classic time where they, they implode. CC gives up, you know, a bunch of runs, but I'm, I'm not going to touch that game. Understood, man. Understood. You like it? <sighs> nah, not really. You know what? Interdivision matchups kind of spook me out a little bit sometimes especially in the AL East um you know I I did lean the Baltimore Orioles over Toronto the other night but other than that nah not much I hear you all right where you at Um, next you know where I'm gonna go so I'm I'm gonna go to Oakland you're going to Oakland versus the Red Sox yep so you got uh Rodriguez going for the Sox two and one with a 305 and then you got Triggs going for Oakland, five and two with a two one two ERA. Dude is just a beast. I mean, Oakland minus one and a half at plus two twenty with one of the most underrated pitchers on the mound for Oakland. 
Um, I mean, I got to pull the trigger on that. I mean, the Red Sox have not. I mean, the Red Sox have not been good. They, they're not deserving of a line like that. I mean, the, the teams are pretty much the same type of teams, right? So that's where I'm going with it. Interesting. Dream, any opinions on any of this stuff? Uh, any no score first innings? Anything up your sleeve today? You know, I was looking at that. It's funny you mentioned that because I at the Arietta no score first inning with the Milwaukee Brew Crew. I, I, it does have my eyebrow raised that game. Just thinking that Arietta is due to bounce back, maybe come out in the in the form. Um, you're getting a pretty good. You've been getting good starts out of Anderson, as um as Dan said. I was just looking at that game, wondering if I could get that no score first inning to work in that particular matchup. But probably going to stay away from it. It's been hot right now. We had big wins last night with the with the you know with the Preds and with the uh, Golden State Warriors. So uh, no need to push the bar. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, all I'd say on that is Arietta's been getting shelled, especially yeah. lately. Like he's been, he was mediocre in April, right. but in May he has almost a nine ERA. Okay. So, you know, that that's yep. my thoughts on that. And, and he's prone to giving up home runs, which is not good against Milwaukee. So. Right. Maybe right. a score first inning there. A yeah, score right. first inning. There you go. I mean, it is 10 and a half is the total. Um, <laughs> and you know what? I mean, you know, Lester's been just okay, too. He hasn't been, like, completely dominant either. You know what I mean? He's, no he's, Lester today. What's that? Marietta. No, I know, but I'm just saying, like, for the Cubs in general. Oh, Yeah. You yeah, I, like I said, I still think it's a World Series hangover. It's also the weather is still not been great across the country, right? So if the if we get to like after the trade deadline and the Cubs are still 500, maybe I'll be a little concerned, but I'm I'm not very concerned about the Chicago Cubs. Okay. Any interest in Tommy Malone? For the no. New York Metropolitans versus Jesse Chavez for the LA Angels. Mets run line plus 185, Dan. Yeah, Nothing. and I'm even seeing it up to uh, plus 195. And I almost I, I thought about it, but no. No. I'm uh I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go that route. I, I Malone is just too much I mean, I told everybody who asked me who asked me about Tommy Malone when the Mets picked him up, and I was just like, you know what? He stinks. He's a subpar pitcher. And he showed that in his first start. I, I just, I have no faith. Look, obviously I'm rooting for the Mets to win, but I don't think that's the right play. Um, I think if you're looking for another good plus money play, the Arizona Diamondbacks minus one and a half. Dan, uh, you got mad road teams today. That's why he's doing um, one and a half, Stream. Yeah. The run, the, the road teams, whew, that's crazy. Kid. You got, what you got? All road teams? It does, yeah, but I mean, um, are they all roads? I don't think they're all roads. I think oh, okay. we might have one home team <laughs> in there. But yeah, you got that's the A's. Right because He's got the, the A's is, at home. Yeah, but the thing is, right, so the D-backs at the Padres. The Padres are 15 and 30. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I'm like, no I'm, I'm with you. No, no. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, they're that brutal. one I get. But there's a couple, but the D-backs are 8 and, 12, eight and 10 on the road. Um, the thing that bothers me is, you know, I don't remember how it worked last year, but I know in years previous, home teams on the, just the last day of those three game series or four game series. Though I thought I thought we had a little slight advantage for the home teams. I mean, I don't, I don't really buy into okay. that so much. I think it's, I you know, I more look at the starting pitcher and like. And I think if you have two equal teams, right. you know, like let's say the Diamondbacks were Colorado today, or at the Dodgers, yeah, right. perfect, right? I'm not, I'm not going to mess with that. Right. But when we're talking about a team, and look, they in the last two games at San Diego, nineteen to two. Yeah, right. They you know, murdered and them. you, right? They've murdered them. Well, and, eight, of this, eight of the Zizzer Padres is a bad example that I'm, I'm <laughs> on board with. So that's a bad yeah. example right there. Um, I just, like I said, you know, just there's a couple others. The St. Louis, the, you know, the St. Louis San Francisco Giant one, you know, raises an eyebrow a tad bit only because Kane hasn't been all that in years. B- been better this year so far than I think we've expected him. But we know in past seasons, it, it just seems like he, he had fallen off. So this is going to be interesting. To me, this is an interesting matchup because I'm almost kind of signing with Hatton. 
until I know his hat. Oh yeah, um, with St. Louis. <laughs> but then I know his hat, and I'm like, all right, never mind. I don't really want. No, St. Louis. I, I know there's that. That's probably the riskiest play on the card, definitely. Okay. But I, I also think that Wainwright is a shell of himself too. He stings. Okay. I think he, you know, he has a chance to get hit up a little more than Kane. Um, you know, I see where you're coming from, but again, I. I do look at home and road, but not when there's a disparity. But I also think, I mean, hey, plus 240, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes, sir. Any interest in taking the over tonight with the Texas Rangers and Detroit Tigers? Uh, No, but I will take the Rangers minus one and a half. Yes? Yes. Versus Boyd? Yeah, let's <laughs> let's light up the boy. Let's fade the boy. I mean, yeah. you know, it's Dar- I mean Darvish um, against Boyd tonight. I-, I just think that the Rangers, you know, they lost they lost yesterday. Like we we all called that right, mm-hmm. and now we have Darvish four and two with a two seven six against Boyd two and three with a five one eight. Um, the Rangers get back to their winning ways today. I think I think they bludgeon Boyd today. Okay. Sounds good, man. What else you got? You got any more or are you good? Um, That is it. That is going to do it for the Major League Baseball breakdown. Great breakdown, Dan. Thanks, I like the one and a halfs, kid. Really I'm, feeling I'm it. I'm liking really. it a lot. Yeah, man. Yeah. Get, get, go, go and have a four and two day with a run line. You know, especially yes. when you're those plus two forties. Ooh. That, that's great... when that's when the book that's when the bookies cry in a little bit. And he's like, "Can I can I wait till uh, Tuesday to pay you back?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so you already I, you already took all my LeBron James money. Yeah, good point. All right, well, <laughs> hey, uh, Terrence Mack is asking, where do we get all our MLB stats from? Dan has some really good ones because you you know like what particular pitchers are facing each team's lineups and stuff like that. So where do you get your stuff, Dan? all over the place but if you're looking for like batter versus pitcher stats if you just like google it espn has a great thing that comes up so like if i was going to look at for instance like uh the rangers versus boyd right so i'll just type that into google and then you get um you get it looks like it's a batter versus pitcher matchup um and that, that's where I get that stuff from. You know, MLB.com is a treasure trove. Because remember, baseball is all about statistics. So they keep sure. it. Baseball reference. I mean, really, I mean, and then when you're looking at injuries, and I've preached this forever, a lot of times you can find out, and this is more for fantasy, I think, than, than gambling. Because if you're gambling, not knowing the health of your team or whatever, that's a little crazy. But, you know, look at the local, like, um, local papers more than, like, national stuff to see about injuries because they'll have the inside scoop on all that. Right on. But and it's, I, it's everywhere. I do a um, I do a site. It's called MLB-matchups.com. So the dash is like a, a hyphen. And, I mean, it just gives you kind of a quick glimpse of like a smart chart, you know, offensively versus defensively, so on and so forth. And then if you want to break it down even further, then you can go to other pages and whatnot. But it uh, works pretty well for me. You could see like previous matchups. You could see um, – pitchers eras you could look at a bunch of different stuff on there so Mm -hmm. that's where i go so yeah and like so like mlb.com like if you're looking at a matchup and you click into a pitcher and you like scroll down his page you'll also see like all they have all the breakdowns so you can look at like obviously road home night day all the splits um, so I, I think that's probably if you're looking for a, a compilation that's easy to read. I think MLB.com mobile site's a little shaky. I, I got to be on the PC for that. Dream, where do you find all your Major League Baseball statistics? Basically, where Dan just said, and I, and I use ESPN a lot too. I use the ESPN um, website as well. I use the MLB website. I don't use the one that you use, Hat, um, and I also use um, uh, another fantasy website because the fantasy stats is is apropos with the regular stats on top of it so it's it's kind of it's pretty in depth like dan says so yeah i use all those stats as well all all those sites as well cool deal all right so what else we got going on today well we got a little bit of basketball we got a little bit of hockey yeah we do we do so i mean lebron minus 17 i'm i have no interest in that whatsoever I, i just 
I just don't know. I mean, I, maybe it'll win by 20, 30. I think they're having a lot of fun right now. It, I mean, can have you guys gathered that? That this team is just oh, having fun, having just bl- beating the hell out of teams? You know, I mean, they have no controversy whatsoever. They have basically, I mean, you know, LeBron's joking around in the uh, in the post games and stuff like that. I mean, why not just keep the momentum going and just beat them by 40 again? Do you think they see the number? Do you think they see the line? Um, Dream and I have talked about this time and time again. I, I think they're aware of it. I don't think they go out and care if they cover or not. I'm wondering that now, though, because, like, you know, LeBron, sometimes I think with some of these great guys, they look like, oh, we're only going to win by five. We're only going to win by six. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to kill these guys. Well, I don't I don't think that they're as cognizant of it. Uh, Certain certain guys are certain certain players are certain players do, you know, certain players have been, I think, over the years. I think when you think about guys that are gamblers i.e. Michael Jordan, obviously Pete Rose. Um, those guys definitely paid attention probably to the numbers and the spreads. I don't necessarily know that LeBron James is one of those guys um, in that particular aspect. Not saying that other members of the team may not be, but I don't think LeBron is personally. So I don't think he's any more motivated by the point spread um, than any other player is. All right. Well, I can tell you this much that I did hear a post game one time with my boy and they had mentioned something about Something the reporter asked if you know if, is this your version of you know aren't you supposed to kill this team or something and he was like well we won so that's how I kill him right. you know what I mean so I don't think he cares I, I and yeah. I don't think you know a, a good majority of the players do care especially especially if you know you're up huge you know if you're up like that 15 to 18 points or more uh, I don't really think they care at that point now. Yeah, I see this as a classic backdoor cover. And not only that, not only that, though, if it's not the major player, like if it's not LeBron that cares, because all the other guys, once this, once the points, once the, once the, once this game gets out of hand, now the coach just starts sitting guys, you know, the guys are going to get pulled out of the game and the, and the other guys are going to come in. So even if you got, let's say, J.R. Smith cares, once it gets to, you know, 25 points, Lou's telling Smith to hit the bench. So he's not going to be out there to shoot them threes. Okay, because he got his boy in Vegas putting in the, the wage. Yeah. He's got to go hit the bench. It in comes, you know, Def Jeff uh, to mysteries. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm, yeah, I, I mean, I think that I think really the bottom line of this game is the Celtics can hang before, and now their best scorer is injured. Do they score more than eighty-five points? Maybe not. Maybe maybe you take a team total under a hundred points for the Celtics. That might be the move. Because that over under number looks really high to me too. What is it? Two fifteen. What is it? Two fifteen now. Two fifteen. Yeah, I I like the under in this aspect today. I wouldn't take the team total, but I would take the total for the game, and I do like the under um in this game. I'm going to take the team total under for the Celtics. That's where I'm at. Under a hundred points. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm with you there. You like it? I like it a lot. I mean, they've scored. I don't. I don't see him scoring. I see him scoring like eighty points. Dude, they scored eighty six in the last affair, and now Isaiah Thomas is out, and they were in Boston. <laughs> yeah, and I, I saw some analyst that was like, "Well, maybe uh, you know this will free up those other Celtics players." To I'm like sitting there, like, "What other Celtics players?" Olytic, baby. Yeah, Olenek, what are we going to go? 35, 15, 8, all of a sudden. <laughs> team you know, total we, under, baby. Bill Lambeer. We're going under. team total under 99 and a half for the Boston yep. Celtics. That's where I'm at. You know what? As a matter of fact, you might as well you might as well just get it up to 100. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the, let's... Take the adjusted under, under 90 <laughs> plus 100. <laughs> under 100 uh, is minus 118. I kind of like that. And under, under under if you're under ninety five and a half, it's plus one fifty, Dan. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, bro. That's what I'm talking about. That's, and one thing I did notice, guys, um we're gonna go into hockey in a minute, but if you buy those to- if you're taking unders and you're buying the totals down under five, you know, there's a lot of one nothing games, two one games, stuff like that. So it pays crazy. Just saying. So 
You guys don't want it. Dream, what are you at? Are you gonna you gonna lay to seventeen? No, I'm not laying a seventeen. I'm not laying a seventeen. I like the under for I like the under for I like the under two fifteen for the game. I don't necessarily like Boston under one hundred. I agree with you. I know what you're saying. I hear you. But you know, all of a sudden somebody decides they want to start scoring now because Isaiah Thomas isn't the scorer. And and I hear you with who, but I mean, there's a bunch five other there's ten other professional basketball players on on court then oh i hear you the flip well, side of that is all of a sudden cleveland wants to play around with the defense and tyron lu wants to try to make brilliant new coaching moves and decisions and pull lebron <laughs> out next thing you know you got a headache on your hands so no i'm not gonna go with the, the team total for the celtics under but i do like under 215 and now that we're just gonna segue right into the hockey game you know where i'm at tonight well, hold on one one second because yep. I, i'm gonna go with the under and this okay. is a little crazy, but the under two oh four and a half, yeah, at plus two forty five. There you go, Dan. I Lock love it the, up. Love the plus money plays. All right. Yeah, and there's no player props yet for that game, but nope. that might be something that you want to take a look at, especially with Boston's leading scorer out. Because what's going to happen is they're going to take all the rest of the players and average their last ten games, and someone's going to need to step up. The problem is Cleveland's playing such good defense these days, man. It's been it's been brutal. Yeah, like you said, Hack, go go with that Olenek player prop. There you go. As long as I can find it. All right. Then it gets blocked four times. Yes. Let's go into <laughs> hockey. And see Gang, what... you know where I'm at. Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, basically, this is to get the series dead right and get it get it get it where it should be at. I like the Penguins today, and don't forget it's a three o'clock Eastern Standard Time start. It's not a night game. It's three o'clock Eastern Standard Time start, which I actually think, believe it or not, the start time of this game also favors the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, don't ask me why. Just 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 a little feeling I have. But I like the Penguins tonight. Penguins kind of showed their showed they they went. Got out of trying to get the perfect shot and went for a plethora of shots on goal. That's what we're looking to do tonight. It, the Penguins, though, they can, the, the Penguins can beat the Senators. It's about going out and doing it. Um, they made the defense goal. They made the goalie change last game. They put Murray in the goal. I expect Murray to be back in the goal again today uh, at four at four o'clock. I mean three o'clock. You might want to check that before you put it in. I still think even if Flurry goes in there, they're going to be fine no matter which goalie is in. Um, this 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 is a this is a to me a very solid spot for Pittsburgh and gang. The under five and a half has been absolutely money as we hit it again yesterday so let's just keep on riding that under five and a half buy it up a half a point let's keep riding the under five and a half because the playoff games are so tight the defense is tightening up you don't get as many power plays so the clock is allowed to run a little bit more freely I'm telling you i think the under five and a half is solid and i got the pittsburgh penguins winning tonight as well under four and a half is plus 165 if you wanted to get involved yeah guys right? don't listen <laughs> You guys <laughs> making money, Dream. Come on, making, we're making money. Making ten dollars, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it looks like it looks like from what I'm reading that was at least about twenty minutes ago. It looks like Murray will be will be in the net. I'd be surprised if he wasn't. Yeah. I'd be I'm surprised if he wasn't. Now they they might switch him. They could switch him, you know, I, I, which I don't think that they will. But that's a possibility. But I would be surprised if Murray. Matter of fact, I would be surprised if Murray just didn't get like from here to the Stanley Cup to the to the, to the end. If just Murray's left in goal. I mean, he's been the much better goalie all yeah. year. Yeah, he has. All right, and there's a ton of game props, guys. If you want to get involved in them with this hockey game, three o'clock. Cool. Dan, where you at? You going? You going to bet this game? Nah, no, nah. you're good. You got enough baseball going on. I got enough baseball, and plus, I mean, like with the goalie change, I, I I'm with Dream. Like I expect Pittsburgh um, to take this game, but again, Ottawa has been incredibly resilient, much more so than I would have thought. So, I mean, again, I I think Pittsburgh wins this game pretty handily, but I'm not going to play it. Will this game go to overtime, guys? No, no. no. Okay. All right, so I think that's pretty much going to do it for us. Great Sunday show, guys. 
Unless you got anything else, Dream. Good Sunday show. I just want to thank everybody out there who's retweeted the show. We got Benjamin Rowe in the house. We got Terrence Mac, OJFB out there. Mo Diggs, my boy Irvin, Vegas Girl, 92661. Joseph Del Rosario, Fast Eddie, 72. Wayne Yarborough, AB Lent, Swing Cut. Swing Cat Sides, KMVU, my man Rick Lopez. It's almost like back in the day with, with a little retweet action. <laughs> well, you know what it is. It's uh, you know the weekend show is where it's at. And guys, we're gonna we're gonna say that we are after the NBA Finals. We're gonna be on weekends, and it's gonna be great shows on the weekends, man. So and just gonna be gearing up, getting ready for football after that. <laughs> And football is going to be a tear. Always remember who you went. Make the most of each and every day as you cannot get this time back. And one thing I can't say about football season is on week one, we will be doing our weekly fantasy contest dream. Week one, we're going to start it. We'll, we'll, we'll see, Hat. No, we're doing it. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see. You'll oh, probably yeah, yeah. No, because you're, you, you, remember who was dominant of both of you guys and, we, we and just, you're 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 making plans in the future is mad shaky okay <laughs> sounds good all right dan what do you guys say to close out of here brother yeah man so again another another great weekend uh guys everything here is a minus one and a half play except the brewers which is plus 170 so we're gonna go with the rockies the giants the diamondbacks the rangers and the oakland athletics uh, best of luck to everybody today. Make that money, and hey, if we do well today, we might throw a, we might throw a little bit on on LeBron minus seventeen because somehow I think oh yeah, and sorry the under two two oh four and a half in that game we're gonna ride a plus two forty. All right, Dan, uh, I do have a number for the Brewers minus one and a half at plus two sixty. Ride it, ride it. Yeah. Ride it. Love it. All right, guys. We love you to, jet, to death. Enjoy your weekend, whatever's left of it, and we'll be back tomorrow night. Take Peace. care. Peace.